Executive Decision is a 1996 thriller, mostly famous for killing off Steven Seagal about 20 minutes in. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Now, if you're a gadget nerd, you might also remember it as the film where the bad guys tried to set up us the bomb with a Scion PDA. Well, thanks to a company called Planet Computers, that pocket computer has been reinvented for 2018. And everyone that isn't raising a skeptical eyebrow is actually lining up to buy one. Let's find out why in the Mr. Mobile Planet Gemini review. Normally, when I review a product, the question I'm trying to answer is whether it's worth the asking price. But the Gemini was crowdfunded, and successfully, almost 6,000 people pulled over $2 million to bring it to life. So the people who want it have already put their wallets behind it. And my question then becomes, how well does it live up to its promises, and what can be improved if there's a version 2? First, let's pin down what the Gemini is. Lots of people asked me if it's a smartphone during my review period, and the technical answer is yes. My unit is a 4G device running Android with the ability to make voice calls. The quality of those calls is fine. I had no complaints about reception on T-Mobile, and it's actually not as awkward to talk on as you might think. A nice touch is that there's no such thing as right side up or upside down. Each end has both earpiece and microphone. You don't need to open it to dial. You can use the smart button on the side to use Google Assistant to do it. But as you've probably noticed, there's no external display nor a volume control. There's also no primary camera. Now, you can buy a $50 camera module that plugs in next to the SIM tray. And accessories like a smartwatch and a headset do help make this a better phone. But it wasn't designed to be that. It's more accurate to think of this as a tiny laptop, which is why there's also a Wi-Fi only version. Planet says Gemini is built for creators who rely on a full keyboard, but also want something they can slip in their pocket. The resulting clamshell clicks closed with a crisp magnetic clack. And when it folds open, it deploys a clever hinge for tabletop typing. Side-firing speakers produce thin but loud sound, while two USB-C ports accommodate charging and data transfer. The design is really excellent. The execution of that design is a bit wanting, though. A device built around its keyboard needs the keyboard to be the best thing about it. And while this production version is way better than the one I first tried at CES, it still needs another round of revisions before I can recommend it. Three of the keys on my device regularly stick halfway between up and down. It doesn't affect their input, but it does affect how typing feels. Also, some keys are slightly misaligned, and the spacebar is finicky. Uh, these issues have also been reported on production units in the wild. My biggest complaint? There's no backlight. Planet just couldn't fit one in while preserving the feel it was going for. Defenders maintain that the Gemini is built for touch typists, who shouldn't need to look at the keys anyway. Fair point. But this is not a standard layout. There's a function button that controls key doubling or tripling, and until you get used to which keys are where, it's very challenging to use on a dark overnight flight, which is where I first put it to the test. Once you get used to it, the size does make it a perfect flying companion when you want to write without busting out a huge laptop. It looks too small, I know, like you'd have to peck out letters finger by finger, but that wasn't the case for me after two or three days. Also, there are lots of keyboard shortcuts for brightness, media controls, clipboard hotkeys, even Alt-Tab for app switching. Press the Planet button and you get a pop-up dock that you can fill with your favorite apps. Now, I know you're thinking it, so let's ask the question. Doesn't a keyboard accessory do all this just as well? I mean, why not just slap a Giorno or something onto your phone instead? Well, I figured the best folks to ask about that were the people who bought the Gemini and the responses carried similar themes. Lack of satisfaction with touchscreen-only typing, the inconvenience of having to carry and charge a separate keyboard, and a distrust or dislike of platforms like iOS and Android. The Gemini ships with an unlocked bootloader, and it's been shown running Linux Debian, Ubuntu, and even Sailfish. Instead of being locked down and optimized for consumption, it's wide open and built for creation. Planet has also released the source code for the bootloader and kernel, so theoretically the Gemini could eventually run many more operating systems, including booting from the microSD slot or a USB drive. 
Support for those other platforms is nascent at this stage, though, so Android is the default that ships with the Gemini. Let's wrap it up with some test notes. The LCD is bright enough for all conditions I tested, and it's big enough to usefully run two apps side by side. Unfortunately, if there is an oleophobic coating, it's not a very good one. Keep a chamois around to get the grease off. The LEDs on the cover have a wide array of colors and animations. Right now it just blinks red when you have a notification, but the planet says customization is coming soon. It's version 7.1.1, and prospects for an Oreo update are uncertain thanks to the MediaTek chipset. Which, while brawny enough to make for speedy software, isn't as power efficient as some other processors are. The battery always got me through a day of heavy use, but I was kind of hoping for two days. And there are the usual first-gen hardware problems. In addition to the keyboard inconsistency, this silicone strip on my device was loosening after only two weeks. The webcam is nice to have for video calls, but it's got pretty poor quality. And on the 4G models, the SIM slot is micro instead of nano, which means you'll probably have to get an adapter. For its part, Planet says it's working even on the current production run to tighten quality control and fix the keyboard issues. Given how much the Gemini improved just from January to February, I expect the company will be able to fix some of these teething problems. Be sure to subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss the re-review when it comes along down the road. If your question is whether this should be your next smartphone, the answer is almost certainly no. And if you're happy with your tablet or small laptop, then this isn't for you either. In fact, the Gemini isn't for most folks. But that's kind of the beauty of it, right? I mean, in 2018, when mobile devices all look and feel very similar, enough people got together and said, hey, we want this very specific product for this very narrow use case. And it got built. That's the kind of success story that characterized the tech world in the mid to late 90s. And the Gemini does its progenitors from the same era proud. Planet's next trick, to um, stretch the analogy, will have to be avoiding a repeat of the bubble burst by delivering something tighter and more consistent for the second generation. This video was brought to you by Thrifter. Thrifter is a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value and not hype. Check out the latest deals at thrifter.com and tell them Mr. Mobile sent you. Folks, whether you're a Gemini owner or not, let me know what you think of it in the comments, and be sure to check out Android Central's impressions at the link in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.